Welcome to Catch and Go. It's a blessing to come to you and to deliver the word of the Lord. We're going to go into the conclusion of a title called Come Up, which I spoke to you from Revelation chapter 4. I touch on Revelation 22. I touch on Matthew 27, verse 51. You need to circle that word quake because there's a quaking coming and there is a sound coming and there's a coming movement from Joel 2 and 3 in the third and final crossover. But in this conclusion, let's go first to Revelation 22 and then we go back to Revelation chapter 4. It says that there was a river there that was pure. It was a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb of God. And in verse 2 says, in the middle of its street and on either, either side of the river was a tree of life which bore 12 fruits. Each tree yielded its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were, on the, were for the healings of the nations. And I have said that God just said to me something so powerful at the beginning of this telecast. When I just finished reading to you, verse number two, he said he's going to remove every single curse. Go ahead and claim it in Jesus' name. Every single curse out of your life, and not only out of your life, but he removed every single curse 2,000 years ago because it says that Jesus became a curse by hanging on a tree. In other words, he removed every single curse out of your life and every single generational curse. The problem is because we have turned away from God, not only turned away from God, but we have sinned against God, amen. And the Lord said, not only that, but you have become a habitual offender and a periodically believer who has constantly sinned and you have fallen right back into a curse. But God is about to bring deliberation and a cancellation. And then it says in verse number three, and there shall be no more what? Curse. The Lord just said that. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Let me read that verse number three, because right before I was about to read verse 3. The Lord said he's going to remove every single curse out of every believer's life. Go ahead and lift up your hands because the Spirit of God just showed me Moses. His hands lifted up. The Lord opened my eyes and God wants you to lift up your hands and claim your healing, claim your miracle, claim your breakthrough. And God just said to me, Daniel, 21 day fast. You ought to begin to go on your fast and weep at the feet of Jesus. Build him an altar. Run to the altar because God is about to remove everything every single curse out of your life. And this is what he also said. And he's about to wipe away all of your tears and bring joy, amen, to your life and soul in a moment of jubilation, in a moment of great suffering, in a moment where God just said to me that many of you are falling in, have fallen into depression and many of you are full of anxiety. God, renounce anxiety, renounce depression because a spirit in the glory of God in one single moment will wipe out every curse, wipe away away your tears and put joy inside of you again. Look how the Lord starts the conclusion of this title called Come Up. You see, I found myself the other day wondering and asking myself, what is God basically trying to say? When I heard the Lord say those words to me, come up. And I knew that I had to immediately go into the spirit and search things out in the spirit, not in vain, and search and ask for the Holy Spirit for his guidance to bring me to the place in the chapter 
where I needed to come to, to know and understand what God was trying to bring when it comes not only to the revelation of those words come up, but the substance behind it. And when you look at Revelation 4, it's basically God taking the saints out of the earth and rapture and the catching away. It says in verse number 4, Revelation 22, they shall see his face and his name shall be on their foreheads. Come on, somebody. The coming two seals. Come on, somebody. God is about to put his seal on the saints. As a matter of fact, you already sealed. Somebody's got to shout right now and tell the devil, and not only the devil, the Antichrist, the false prophet, those wicked and those wicked and those on the left, that you are sealed forever with redemption, with the name of Jesus, purchased by the blood, and that the gates of hell shall not prevail. Then it says in verse number four, they shall see his face, and his name shall be on their forehead. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp, nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light and they shall reign forever and ever. Remember I told you to circle verse 23 of Exodus chapter 10, that he brought the nation of Egypt into pitch darkness, but he was a beaming light, a beaming light, and a beaming not only light, but in the dwelling of God's glory. In the dwelling of his light, God sustained us just like he did Moses when Moses went up to the mountain, amen. And Moses didn't eat nothing for 40 days, 40 nights. He was in the glory. What I want to say to you is that in Revelation chapter 4, John is immediately in the glory. Come on, somebody, and tell somebody you got to run back to the glory because God shared a few de days ago in the title called, the conclusion of the title called Decide. God shared what? Now he's about to release what? His Shekinah glory. The glory of God is about to invade the nations, the earth, the universities, the schools, the grammar school, the middle school, junior middle school, and the glory of God is about to cover not only the saints and sustain the saints with his beaming dwelling light, amen, and the glorious light of a resurrection Savior, which the Spirit of God just brought these words out of my spirit when Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Glory to God in the bread of life. Now, verse number six, Revelation 22. Then he said to me, these words are faithful and true. Then he said to me, these words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servant the things which must shortly take place. Let me say this again. Here is God in Revelation 22 saying, this is the things which I have shown my servant, the things which must take place. When we go back to Revelation 4, it says in verse 1, after these things, I looked and behold, a door standing, I op opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. God was basically shaking not only John in immediately into the throne, but in the spirit, amen, God just said he took, he took John like a rushing wind. He took his spirit and not only rushed his entire, uh, entire spirit, and John was immediately in the spirit, witnessing one sitting in the throne, and then they sound like a voice of a trumpet speaking, and declaring, these are the things that I am showing you, basically, and the things that are to come in the future. God has been using 
in 2021 and for so many years, true prophet, true, I'm talking about true, with zero tolerance, declaring a message of repentance and forgiveness and holiness, but from a place of a pure heart and from a place where we need to understand that we need to reverence God and not only reverence and fear God from a place of holiness, a message of holiness, a message of redemption, a message of where you repent and you turn and God forgives you, amen, and refreshes your soul so that you can experience flourishing season from Acts chapter 3, verse 19 to 21, Peter's famous sermon, amen. Now, remember I said to you, Acts 3, 21, Jesus must remain still until all things are restored. But let's go and read again verse number 6 of Revelation 22, and then I will pick it up. Then he said to me, these words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servant the things which must surely take place. And I want to stop right here. Because the other day, and this the Lord just reminded me, that's why I have to stop here, of something he reminded me that I said to myself. When I heard the Lord said those words to me, before I got up and before I opened my eyes, the Lord said those words to me, come up. I immediately said to myself, the Lord has sent a messenger, not only a messenger to deliver that word to me. And as I got up, I remember very clearly saying that to myself. And when I read here, Revelation 22, verse 6, it said he sent his angel to show his servant the things which must shortly take place. Verse number 7, behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the word of the prophecy of this book. Verse number 8, now I, tell somebody, now I, John, saw and heard these things. He saw and he heard. He saw and he heard. And when I heard and saw these things, amen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, see that you do not do that, for I am your fellow. Watch, watch this. For I am your fellow servant and of your brethren, the prophets, and of those who keep the word of this book, worship God. And he said to me, do not seal the word of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. But look what it says. John says in verse 8, now it says in verse 8, Now I, John, saw and heard these things, and when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he goes, the angel turns around and says, See that you do not do that, for I am, for I am your fellow servant and of your, and of your brethren, the prophets. Look, let's continue. Let's go all the way to verse number 11 of Revelation 22. And it says, he was unjust, let him be unjust still. He was filthy, let him be filthy still. He was righteous, let him be righteous still. And he was holy, let him be holy still. Verse 12 of Revelation 22. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. Verse 13. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Verse 14. Blessed are those who who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. I want to go all the way to verse number 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Now, here is why I chose to make Revelation 22 my conclusion. And the reason is right here, which is brings out and not only the substance, not only is the substance to the title call come up here, those words come up, but it also is not only in line, 
But the Lord said to me just a protocol. Not everything has got to be word upon word, preaching upon preaching, line upon line. And let me read verse number 17. In the spirit, and the bride said what? Come. And let him who hears say come. And let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the waters of life freely. For I testify to everyone who hears the word of this prophecy of this book. If anyone asks to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in the book. And if anyone takes away from the word of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in the book. Verse 20. He who testified to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. And even so, come Lord Jesus. Verse 21, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Let's go to Revelation chapter 4. And I want to go to Revelation chapter 4. And I want to begin to close in this conclusion of a title called Come Up. But I want to speak and start from verse number 8. Then the four living creatures, each have six wings, were full of eyes around within, and they, they do not rest day and night, saying, Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. Come on, say it with me. Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, who was, it is, and it is to come. Verse number nine. When, whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever. Watch verse number 10. Verse number 10. It says, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord. Come on, say it with me. Everybody, every believer around the world, every born again believer that listens to this telecast, come on and repeat verse number 11 and repeat it on Sunday when you go to church because God said to me a few days ago, come up and I begin to search. I wanted to search in the spirit and not in vain. And God took me to Revelation chapter 4, Revelation 22, Matthew 27, verse 51. The coming quaking, the coming sound. He went up with a shout. He comes back down with a shout. From 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. From 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 on down. As the sound of the trumpet. As the sound of the trumpet. And the glorious risen Savior. And that blessed hope from Titus 2 comes back to take us home. And it says, the 24 elders can put their, cast their crowns before the throne saying, You are worthy, O Lord. Come on, somebody. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Say with me, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by your, by your will, they exist and they were created. It's a created now moment. It's a now word. The title of this come up, it's a now word. It's not only a now word, it's a God-given prophecy. And not only a God-given prophecy, but in part one of the title come up in the benediction and in my closing, I said to you, the Lord opened my ears and I saw there was a celebration. There were jumping, there was shout, there was praise. God opened my ear and I'm telling you that we're closer than ever before to not only going straight into the beamer seat, getting catch in the catching away, going into the beamer seat, and also going into the pearly gates where the Spirit of God said to me in the benediction of part one, where he opened my ear and I saw the saints celebrating, and there was shout and celebrating in the streets. The Lord said to me, remember he said, in the streets of gold, inside the pearly gates, there's a crystal river. There are the streets of gold. We're about to meet the rose of Sharon. We're about to go up in glory. Blessed power and honor and glory to a blessed hope, a blessed Savior, a blessed King, a blessed Father, a blessed Holy Ghost. Turn around and tell somebody, you are blessed because God just said to me that in this jubilation, in the moment 
moments where we're experiencing tribulation, God said that not only you're going to overcome all of the circumstances and all of these obstacles, but God is basically calling you an overcomer and a more than a conqueror in his kingdom. Look, I've been sick for a week and my wife as well as the Lord as the Lord has seen this vicious attack of the enemy and the one thing that we kept doing was we kept pressing in and the more the enemy attacked the more vicious we became the more stern we became, the more we stood in our faith, the more we stood side by side with a glorious King, a glorious Savior, a glorious Father, a glorious, glorious Holy Spirit. What I want to say to you, God said that in this moment of jubilation, where we haven't even gone into the great tribulation yet. God is basically saying, you're an overcomer and that you will overcome all obstacles. Now I wanna close with this. I wanna take my glasses off and I wanna look into this camera. And I wanna to speak to every human being but I also want to speak to the body and to the saints and to the believers. If there's one thing that you need to be doing, I will tell you what the Lord just said to me. If there's anything that you need to be doing right now, is you need to be preparing your soul for eternity and preparing your soul and being dressed and ready and locked and ready to leave this earth any moment now. Look, we know in this ministry very clear that there's got to be where the Antichrist must come and the world must see him. We know that. We know that false prophet, prophet must also come on the world stage. We know that there's got to be a great tribulation. We know that there's got to be the peace treaty. We know that the two witnesses, we know all that. What I'm basically saying is what God wants you to know and what God's making very clear with what he said a few days ago to me is that God's basically have in mind to end this whole thing a whole lot faster for the sake of the elect. Now I'm gonna tell you what he said to me just now. Remember I told you that I was gonna tell you what he said. He said these words, I heard, I heard him say, prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. And then I heard him say, John the Baptist. Remember there was one man, John the Baptist, preparing the way of the Lord and making every crooked path straight. But in the hour of trial, in the hour of your soul, spirit, mind, heart being tested, and your faith being challenged and tested, God is saying that he's building one army to be one prophetic voice in the spirit of unity from Psalms 133 from Acts 2.44. So that when Joel 2 and 3 breaks out the outpouring, which I will call, which I call and I title the coming movement, which I haven't spoken on. God is basically saying and announcing right in this teleclass, in this closing, to every Christian, every believer, and every born-again believer. He's saying, be a partaker and a participant, and a facilitator of preparing the way of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I want to close with this. 
In Matthew 27, verse 51, I have said over and over that for many of us, for many of us, for many of us, we have been not only or have heard very clearly the Lord tell us the word quake or quaking and that there's a shaking coming. But that quaking consists of Joel 2 and 3, Psalms 133, Isaiah 40, 31, Acts 2, 44, God, Revelation chapter 4, Revelation 22, and God closing this thing a whole lot quicker. And it's got nothing to do with this revival. But it has everything to do also with, it also has to do everything to do with Isaiah 57, which I told you verse 14 and 15, where in verse 15 says that towards the middle of verse 15 of Isaiah 55, I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. For I will not contend forever, nor will I always be angry. For the spirit would fail before me and the soul which I made. I will stop there. Broken but revived. Not only broken and with a contrite and broken spirit, but a humble spirit, but revived. Joel 2 and 3, in this coming movement, in this global awakening, is God taking those men and women that are broken and contrite and humble in spirit, and reviving their soul, spirit, mind, heart. And the Lord just said, structuring their spirit, modifying, restructuring, amen, to bring about the greatest single prophetic voice ever. An army that's one voice preparing the way of the Lord and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, I want to close with this. And I've said this many times from this chapter. And Revelation chapter 6, verse 13 says, Revelation 6, verse 13, And the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drop its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then you remember the rest of the verses. I remember a little more than three and a half weeks ago, I was doing a telecast, and as I was talking about verse 15, God opened my eyes, and he showed me the mountains moving. And that's why I, got, I, I know that God's basically saying that we need to pay close attention because in the 17th verse, of Revelation 6 says, For the great day of wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Luke 21, verse 36. Now, in Revelation chapter 4, I close with this. I had to take my time I wanted to make sure, I wanted to search, not only search, but the Lord said to me the word diligently, and he said he rewards those who diligently what? Seek him. Not only seek him, but seek, seek out the revelation 
in the substance beyond the revelation of what God's basically trying to say. And in John, Revelation chapter 4, when God took John immediately into the spirit, he was talking about present and future moments and future events. And also concerning the coming of the Lord and the ending of all of humanity and things on the earth. But Revelation chapter 4 basically speaks of the catching away and rapture and the Lord taking the saints out of the earth. I hope that you've been blessed. I hope that perhaps this message will help you to not only prepare even more, more quickly, more quicker, excuse me, but remember the Lord said also a few minutes ago that you're an overcomer and that you will overcome all obstacles. And that's basically what he says in Revelation 3, 5. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garment, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angel. He who, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. God is basically saying he will clothe you in white garment, and he will not blot out your name, but confess your name before the Father. And then you know verse 10 11, 12, there it talks about verse number 10, 11, and 12. Because you have kept my commandments to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world. Meaning he will protect you. Receive God's divine heavenly protection upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast, hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. It says, hold on. Don't let no one steal your crown. Remember I says Matthew 24, verse 4. Matthew 24, verse 22. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more, and I will write on him the name of my God in the name of the city of my God in the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from God, and I will write on him my new name. I just want to close with this. I, I want to look into this camera and say to every believer and to every human being that exists and breathes on the face of the earth and walks on this earth, God is making one final call. And the grace of God just show me again, like he did in part one of this title called Come Up, he showed me the fourth angel in mid-ear with a trumpet in his mouth proclaiming the good news. Anyway, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, hit on the bell to receive our latest telecast. And remember, I catch you on my next telecast of Catch and Go. God bless.